Hi, today I want to talk about task threads in Lucy. We already did a video about threads in general, so you if you want to have information about threads in general, please watch that video first. But first we start with a regular thread in Lucy. So you see here I have a thread and that thread gets started and then throws an exception. In the request starting the threads, I join that thread, so I wait that that thread end and then it output the information of that thread. When we execute that, you see we get the, all the information from the thread. It was terminated, not completed because it has an exception. And with error, you see I get the complete catch block. So that's a regular thread. I have defined it type theme and that's the default type. So when you define no type, it's always use type theme and that's the regular thread. So a regular thread is first bound to the current request. So I always can, with, with help of CF thread, I always can see what the thread is doing. With help of action join, I can wait the thread points ends and I join it. Or I can call action terminate and end the thread. So I have always control over that thread. A thread only runs once, so it it runs at the at the end of the CF thread tag, or when there is an exception, it ends as well. And there is no special exception handling. So when the thread fails, it fails unless you have like a CF um, CF try catch inside the thread, and you have uh, your exception handling there. Um, it will simply fail. When it fails, it fails. And run and forget. So when, when, it, when I don't handle it in the request that was calling the thread, it, after it was run, successful or not, it's simply forgotten. Next to daemon threads, Lucy also support task threads. The difference is that the task thread is executed completely independent of the request that is calling the thread. But on the other side, we lock that thread and can re-execute it. So we have the similar example as before, but what we don't have is the join and the output of the result because we can join and output it. But let's execute it. When we execute it, we get no result that is expected. We make no output. But when we go to the Lucy admin, we have here a page called services tasks. And here we see the task. So you see the name of the task, uh, the type, it was a CF thread. It could also be a mail or other, other tasks. But in that case, it was CF thread. And I see it was, it tried only once to run it. When we go to detail view, I see the exception it was thrown by the task. And I see on which template it was executed. And it is, the state is closed, so Lucy will not try to run it again. So that was a simple execution. But what it can do as well is to uh, define a retry interval. So maybe I do some execution that I need a external service and maybe that service is not always uh, reacting or available. So I, try, I will tr retry in case it fails. So in that case, I define, I have the same example, but I define a retry interval and it says uh, retries three times uh, every one second. So when it fails, it will retry three times again, uh, always after a second. When we execute that, we again get no output, but in the admin, we will have a result again. We go again to the overview page and we see now, we now have two tasks. Both are closed because of that they are red, but this in this case, it executed that task four times, not only once. So we, when we go in again, we see number of tries is four, uh, number of remaining tries are under zero, so it will not try to execute it again, and the state is closed. And you see, I always get the same exception. So the task is done for Lucy. I also can delete this tasks here or execute it again. So when, when I choose only the, the, this one and execute it, you see now the number of tries are five. So it did re-execute that task. We go again 
a little bit different from the context because it was executed from another place. But again, we have the same exception. And of course, I also can delete them. In this example, we had a simple retry interval defined, just uh, how many times and the time range between the tries. And But you can make that even more complex. In that case, I have an array of multiple retry intervals defined. So I say try three times every one second, then try five times after that every five seconds, and when that fails, Try again 10 times every 10 seconds, then 10 times every minute, and 10, 20 times every 10 minutes. So it tries a lot. When we execute that, again, no output, but in the admin, we will see a result. You see now, it's in that case, it's, it's not red because it's not done retrying. So it already... Um, tried five times and the next execution is is that time. When I refresh the page, you will see now it already have uh, tried eight times and that will the next execution time when we go in, we again have all the, the exception we had and you see number of remaining tries are 40, number of tries are nine, next execution, last execution and so on. And of course, I can also always execute manually from here or say, okay, make no sense to retry and then I'd simply delete it. So these are task threads. So in opposition to daemon threads, task threads can run more than once. As you have seen, I can define a retry interval and in case they fail, execute as many times I want. And... You can schedule the late rerun and you can control it in the administrator. Task threads are not bound to the request starting the thread as daemon threads are. But you still can control them with help of the component administrator. That component is available everywhere. So you can do a simply new administrator and then you have the same possibilities you have in the Lucy administrator. In that case, I, before I do it, I may I sleep for a second. And the reason is when you create the task, then the task is physically created on the system and then added to the spooler. And this takes some time. The reason it is first make physically available is that when you restart the system, it can survive. So that's the first step. So we I take some time because of that. I sleep a second to make sure it exists on that line. So first thing we do is we list all existing tasks. Um, that's a query we dump them. So when we execute that, you see we now get a query that contains the information to that task. We have an ID execution time exceptions and so on what you can do in addition is to execute a task like you can do in the admin as well what i do i simply call execute task and the id of the task so when we execute that you see uh, first i have the listening i have now two tasks and i get exception that is exception that the task is throwing and the last thing you can do is you can remove task. You can remove a single task again by defining the ID of the task or you can remove all tasks. So when we do that, see we get no feedback, but when we change to the administrator, you see they are gone. Of course, we can also list them here again uh, by removing to create a new task and simply list them. You see, they are gone. No entries anymore. I hope this video was helpful to you. Have a good one.